Unless you're really paying attention, it can be kind of hard to spot a lot of the trends that are emerging right now in the housing market because one thing I constantly tell people about real estate and the housing market in general that a lot of people tend to forget is things move very slowly and we don't see major changes happen overnight. This is not the stock market. Well, there have been a few things happening behind the scenes that a lot of people probably don't realize. Even though things might look normal on the surface, actually a lot of buyers and sellers are in panic mode right now because you have buyers that are backing out of contracts at the same time sellers offering concessions and cutting prices. And those are like the two things that are starting to ramp up but are not very noticeable because depending on where you live you might not even see this happening in your local market. Because one thing that's happening is that even though pending home sales have been creeping up a little bit over the past couple of months, the number of actual closed sales is still continuing to decline. So you're seeing a lot of people make offers and go under contract on houses and then decide to back out probably for a lot of different reasons. People are backing out because the inspection report comes in unfavorable and the seller doesn't want to make the repairs that are necessary to get the house into better condition or people realize how much it's going to cost in insurance, which is a huge problem down here. So those are big things that people run into. People also back out because they're looking at their monthly payment and seeing these interest rates and thinking like, wow, this is a lot higher than I thought it was going to be when you add in the property taxes, when you add in the insurance and all the other expenses that come along with buying a house, especially if there's an HOA payment, it just makes it unaffordable, guys. And then we're constantly getting these reports about how well the economy is doing but in reality, when people look at their budgets and their bank statements and they see how much money they're spending each month right now, the picture that the economy is painting is not the picture that a lot of people are seeing in actual real life. And the reason why people are panicking is because look at this, guys. According to Redfin, in October, we had 54,000 home purchase contracts canceled, which makes up about 17.2% of all homes that went under contract. And that is the highest amount of purchase contracts canceled ever since Redfin started keeping track back in 2017. Now granted, 2017 isn't that far back in terms of data, but that's the biggest pullback that we've seen in six years. So it is significant. Wow, this house is finally pending. I remember I walked past this house many months ago, way before I even left for my road trip for California. It's listed for about $10.5 million and is finally pending as of just a few days ago. But they've been trying to sell this house since November of last year for almost $14 million. Many price cuts later down to $10.5 million. They'll be lucky if this house closes for $10 million or probably even in the nine somewhere is my guess and property tax bill here is eighteen thousand dollars a year at least it's not a flip but man were they way off on the price huh four million dollars only <laughs> and simultaneously you have a lot of sellers that are slashing prices and giving concessions to buyers because that's the only way that the deal will go through in October 21 percent of homes sold had a price cut and 35% of sellers were offering a concession like cash for mortgage rate buy downs, repairs, or closing costs. And Redfin is predicting that in November that the purchase contract cancellation rate will decline due to mortgage rates going down. Like, oh yeah, they went down significantly, guys. It went from 8% to 7.4. What would he do? Now everybody can afford a house. Give me a break. I personally don't think that's going to be enough to move the needle at all because likely the interest rates are not a huge part of the reason people are canceling the contracts. It's all the other expenses involved with buying a house that they only realize after they go under contract. And let's not forget about appraisals either. You know, appraisals dictate whether or not most people can buy a house if they're buying with a mortgage. Because the days of people waiving appraisals or paying over asking price and paying above and beyond what appraisals are coming in at are largely over for almost everybody. But if we check Redfin's website, we can see the price cuts are absolutely exploding right now. They give you only five years of historical data, but when you look at the whole past five years, the price cuts are almost at its highest level ever. The only time it was even anywhere near this high was October last year, actually, and then they started plummeting. And another interesting thing that we can tell from Redfin's data is that when we look at inventory, look at the last five years, guys. Notice how it goes up 
in the spring and summer and comes down in the fall and winter. Well, what's been happening ever since summer into fall? Inventory's actually been pretty much flat and slightly on the rise, actually. It's not going down like it normally does, which means we're having a lot of homes being listed that are not selling right now. And when we look at the historical inventory data on Redfin, if we go back to the pre-pandemic days, in October of 2019, we had about 700,000 more homes on the market than we have today. And that's a pretty significant amount because right now we're sitting about one and a half million. Well, let me ask you this. What do you think is gonna happen when we have all this excess inventory that normally goes away in the fall and the winter that's still listed for sale on the market and then we head into spring and summer next year and we get a new wave of inventory of people trying to sell their homes during the normal selling season? Where do you think inventory is gonna go back to then, guys? I think we could easily see inventory return close to pre-pandemic levels if we get a bunch of new listings in the springtime like we always do. And that's supposedly been the thing that's been hanging up these real estate prices and keeping things high, right? Is the fact that inventory is just too low. Well, we can see it is making a comeback little by little. Man, how about this weather, guys? Isn't Florida supposed to be the sunshine state? Almost every day since I've been back here, it's been, I've been home for about a month now, and I can probably count how many sunny days that we had and I swear, we had way more sunshine in California than I've had so far coming back to Florida. And I've been back for a month already. But I'm not complaining because it feels really nice out here. At least it's not hot, so that's great. You know, I'll take this type of weather any day over being hot. But speaking of California, when I was on my recent road trip to California, I was on the road for many days at a time. It took me about nine to 10 days to drive there the first time. And then on the way back home, it took me even longer. I was on the road for about 11 or 12 days. During that whole time, one thing that really helped me a lot was having a VPN. And for anybody who doesn't know, a VPN stands for a virtual private network. And today's video is sponsored by Surfshark VPN. Now, right now, Surfshark is offering all of my viewers an exclusive Black Friday deal where you can enter my promo code, Michael Bordenero, and get up to six months of Surfshark VPN completely for free. Now, why did I need a VPN? Well, I'm glad you asked, because when you stay at different hotels, you're using public Wi-Fi. And that can present some major security risk for you. And because that network is public, anybody on that network can spy on what you're doing online. And that's where Surfshark VPN really comes in handy because Surfshark VPN will mask your online activity. And what it does is it encrypts all of your information so that nobody can spy on what you're doing. And this really comes in handy when you need to access your bank account or pay bills. You know, that was a crucial thing for me to be able to do that on the road and having the VPN made it so I could do this without being hacked. But it also comes in handy in a few other ways as well. And one of my favorite ones is that when you turn on Surfshark VPN, you can get the best deals with online shopping websites because normally they'll show you prices based on your location, which can actually be different. And if you turn on Surfshark VPN, you can kind of play with that a little bit and change the online prices you're being quoted. I did this a lot with booking hotel rooms. You know, I had to book a hotel room every single night on the road. And by using the VPN, I was able to get a better deal on the hotel room than I would actually be able to get without the VPN, while at the same time protecting my privacy. So make sure you sign up for Surfshark VPN. They have a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you literally have nothing to lose. And remember to use my code Michael Bordenero when you sign up, and you'll get up to six months for free. The link is in the description below. Here we have a house for rent that's been on the market for 90 days, no price cuts for $37,500 a month. It's a Bayfront house that they bought back in 2020 for $6 million and they can't rent it. This place is just sitting empty for the past three months, no price cuts and man oh man, do they really need to be able to get that money for rent because check out their property tax bill, just that alone is already $163,000 a year not including insurance, not including a mortgage, not including the upkeep of this fancy property. Just imagine guys, even at 37 grand a month, they're probably just breaking even on this house and it's empty. I'll tell you who's not being affected by all of this are cash buyers. Because right now in the US, about one in three of all closed home sales right now are because of cash buyers. So cash buyers right now are purchasing, you could say even the lion's share of the real estate right now and on the one hand to me that's kind of surprising because you would think cash buyers would want to be a little bit smarter with their money right now with how shaky ground the economy is on 
but at the same time, if you have that much cash, you probably wanna do something with it besides just leave it into the bank. And that could be the reason so many people buy real estate. But these high mortgage rates are pushing people into purchasing with cash because it just doesn't make sense to get a mortgage, especially if you can afford to pay cash for a house right now because of the amount of money that you will save on interest is tremendous. And yeah, there's the opportunity cost for using the cash to buy the house right now, but if you look at how much money you would save in interest over the life of a 30-year mortgage, let's say, you know, it could be hundreds of thousands of dollars or even over a million dollars, depending on how expensive a mortgage you're looking to get. In September, we saw the highest rate of all cash sales since 2014 at 34%. The interesting thing is too, is because you have so many cash buyers, they're actually the most vulnerable to a downturn in terms of losing money okay because if you look at it like this you have a cash buyer for example let's say they buy a five hundred thousand dollar house they have five hundred thousand dollars invested into that property versus somebody let's say that buys that house with only ten percent down so they buy with 50 grand and finance the rest well if that house goes down by let's say 30 percent in value the person who financed it's going to be upside down but they don't have a lot of money into the deal they only put 50 grand versus somebody that bought the house with cash loses $150,000 of their equity position just like that. And that's not gonna be recovered until the value of the house comes back. But I guess people who are doing this are deciding that they'd rather take that risk than leave their cash wherever they're taking it from right now. And it's actually kind of surprising that many people have cash to purchase, guys. But remember that it's not like only Americans can purchase real estate here in the U.S. And the amount of foreign transactions has gone down substantially over the past several years. But make no mistake, people are still buying from foreign countries. That still does make up a big chunk of the cash transactions that do happen. Look at this house, guys. All these mega mansions they're just building here. You know, this place looks tiny compared to the one we saw in the corner back there. Taking up like two lots and all that. Totally nuts. Here we have another house for rent that's not waterfront for $12,500 per month. And yeah, of course, it's another so-called investment property because they bought it back in 2021 for one and a half million dollars. And who knows what happened to it since. Maybe they lived there, maybe they didn't. And now it's for rent. It's been only about a month, so we don't know if it's gonna really move or if this is gonna be the price or what, but look how much that property tax bill shot up. It went from $6,000 a year to almost $28,000 a year after buying this house. That's a perfect example to show you just how much property taxes can skyrocket when you pay these type of prices for houses. Now you really do have a tale of two housing markets right now when it comes to the way people are buying real estate. You know, you have more people than ever buying with cash. At the same time, you have more people than ever turning to FHA loans because of how cheap it is to be able to buy with an FHA loan amongst other things. And thanks Steve for sending me this story once again. Now the first big appeal with FHA is that their interest rates are slightly lower, okay? If you were to go for a 30-year conventional, at least when this article was written, you'd be looking at 7.84%. But for FHA, it'd be 7.25%. Likely now those rates are both lower because this was towards the beginning of October when this was quoted. But on a $400,000 loan, which is actually pretty high, I would even argue that most people that are buying with FHA are not getting a $400,000 loan because that means they're buying a house that's even more expensive than that. They would only save $162 a month on their monthly payment, which sounds like, you know, some money, but I, you know, there's people out there that spend more than that on their cell phone bill, guys. So it's not like $162 a month is nothing, but in terms of buying a house, it kind of is. So the fact that these FHA loans increase affordability is one reason that people are turning to them, but also one other way that it helps with affordability is the low down payment. When people purchase homes with FHA, they only have to put three and a half percent down. So that is nothing compared to people buying with a conventional. I mean, most of the time you're putting down 10, 15% at least. You know, sometimes it's 5% with conventional, but most time it's 10% or above. So from 10% to 3.5% can make a tremendous difference in being able to get into the home or not. You know, on a $400,000 home purchase, guys, that's the median price right now across the country. You know, that's only $14,000 down versus 40,000 if you're doing 20%. But 
there is another hidden, more insidious reason of why more people are turning to FHA, I suspect. It's not just because of increased affordability, but it's also because the borrowing standards are more lenient. People that have a 500 credit score can buy a house with an FHA loan, guys. How that's not illegal, I have no idea. Because truly, most people that are in this position with their credit are in, have no business buying a house. And that's just not my opinion. That's just because people, if you have a 500 credit score, that means you either have way too much debt and not enough income, or you're irresponsible and don't pay all of your bills, or a combination of both. So how on earth does somebody like that qualify to buy a house? I don't know. Ask the Federal Housing Administration. And look what this story says about this, guys. It says that this might be helpful to consumers who are feeling the burn of today's high inflation environment and relying on credit cards to get by on expenses, therefore giving them higher DTIs. DTI stands for debt to income ratio, and the higher your debt to income ratio is, the lower of a loan you're gonna qualify for. So I think you're gonna see a lot of defaults coming in the future with people that are actually buying homes under these circumstances right now, because if people are stretching themselves that thin that they have to get the FHA loan to buy the house, then they really can't afford it, in my opinion, guys. Like, and that's really not even my opinion. It's just basic math, you know? If you can only put a 3.5% down payment and the FHA loan is the only way you can get your debt to income ratio low enough to be able to afford it because you're living off of credit cards and personal loans, I mean, that just spells the end to me. It's just going to be a matter of time before you have one hiccup in life and you default and it's all over with. I mean, even rich people are having a hard time right now because Alan sent me this story from LA talking about how people that own these big mega mansions over there are choosing to rent them out right now because the market is so slow and stale. Earlier this year, LA introduced a mansion tax for homes that sell above $5 million. And it's a pretty substantial tax and it's a big disincentive for people who own these properties to actually sell them because it removes a huge amount of the profit that they would otherwise make if they turn these properties over. So they're trying to get creative and figure out what to do and they're deciding to rent them out. There was one example of a guy that owns a house in Manhattan Beach where I was staying over there for a month and I don't, I don't remember seeing this house because this, this story has a picture of it. And it's a giant mansion, you know, 13,000 square feet right on the strand. They're asking $150,000 a month for this house. And you can only rent it for like three months at a time. So that is insane money. But just like buying versus renting is anywhere else right now, it's probably actually cheaper than buying that house. They talked to a real estate agent over there that does a lot of short-term rentals. He's got about 250 rentals in his pipeline of people that he deals with. And he's saying right now he's seeing a huge surge in luxury rentals, which is similar to what they saw back in 2008. So you're seeing a lot of people that own these very expensive properties put them on the market for rent, essentially flooding the market. And what does that do? brings prices down, guys. Those are the other people who are panicking out there, are people that own these very expensive properties and have this huge nut to crack each month in order to be able to afford them. They need to get somebody in there. They can't sell it without taking a huge haircut off the price and giving a big chunk of it to the LA County government, but they also can't rent it because the cost of rent is too high. So what do you do with a property like this? Sounds like you just eat it to me. Doesn't sound like these guys have many more options than that. And talk about home sales plummeting. In the LA area, home sales are down about 26.6% right now, year over year. So that is a tremendous drop off in the amount of people buying and selling real estate over there. On top of that, they've had to deal with the Hollywood strikes, which drastically reduced the demand for people that want to rent these high-end properties because typically you have a lot of movie studios that will rent these expensive houses for some sort of show or a movie. Well, that stopped happening for a while. So it's being forecasted by a lot of agents over there. LA is gonna see a decline in both rental prices and sales prices in the near future because of this situation. And the other interesting thing about this is you see people that can afford to spend $150,000 a month on rent clearly can afford to buy a property of their own, but they choose not to for one reason or another. And I think people like that right now are being extremely cautious and being smart with their cash and trying to see what's gonna be the next move happening with the Fed. Where's, where are interest rates gonna go? 
What's going to happen with GDP? What's going to happen with unemployment? They're paying attention to these things and watching their cash and not jumping into this housing market and not paying cash for homes and waiting it out, guys. Because even though it might look like it, not everybody's doing well, okay? Amazon just announced that they're gonna be laying people off in their Alexa division and didn't even say how many, just several hundred people are gonna be losing jobs over there. So that's just the latest round of layoffs being announced. And you know, one thing I've seen with all these layoff stories, you know, we only see a small fraction of the amount of layoffs that actually happen because if there's no announcement, if there's no news story about it, then it goes untalked about. But there's a lot of companies that lay off you know, 10 people, 15 people, 30 people, that doesn't have to be reported and kind of goes unnoticed until you start seeing the unemployment numbers slowly tick up like we have been seeing. So there are signs that things are starting to weaken, guys. We can't go on forever in a situation where people just continue to pay all-time high prices for all this stuff and people are magically just gonna have the money for it because we know that people don't and people are going into massive debt to keep up with the lifestyle and the purchases right now, which is a situation that will come to an end. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure you subscribe to the channel. And if you don't wanna wait for my next video to come out, check out this one on the screen right over here, and I'll see you in the next one.